Um, <laughs> hey, um, how are you? Uh, it's, it's, it's been a minute. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jalen. It's been it's been a few months. It's it's been a few months. It's been a wild time these last couple months since um, Emily and I last posted. But I'm hoping that with Christmas break now and then the new year, we'll be able to get back on track and start posting more consistently and more regularly. Um, but we'll see and so today i'm gonna be doing a october and november wrap up because i honestly didn't read much during this time but i did read six books in total all of them but one are audiobooks and i was like i'm not just gonna do one video for three books like <laughs> didn't make any sense so here we are i'm getting good reads pulled up so i can look and remember what i read so the first book that we have is Jaws by Peter Benchley, and I gave it a three out of five star. Um, I thought it was pretty enjoyable from what I remember. Um, I didn't enjoy the audiobook that much, so if you have a physical copy, I highly recommend trying the physical copy. Um, I definitely wanna try reading it again, maybe in the new year, um, but like maybe borrowing it from the library or something like that, because honestly, like, I don't know, maybe just because what I thought the book was gonna be about. So like, I haven't really heard much about the plot besides like, you know, like the iconic poster with the shark and everyone knows Jaws. And I rode the ride in Universal, like when I was little, a whole bunch of times. So I was like, okay, I just wanna give the book a shot. And honestly, it was nothing like I expected. So the beginning was like really focused on the shark, which what I thought was gonna be the entire focus of the book, but like, no, it was heavily character driven. There was just so many different layers and dynamics. After I finished the book, I was like, okay, why, are, why is this people's favorite book, you know? And just like reading all these like analyses, analysis. <laughs> I read like a book analysis of uh, Jaws and they were just like talking about what the author was trying to get at about social class, all of that. And I, I didn't get that when I was reading it, but also I wasn't going in with that mindset that I should be reading for a specific thing. So um, with that, I thought it was enjoyable. The beginning especially was suspenseful and interesting with the shark and like no one really knows what's going on. Like, where's the shark coming from? Why is it eating people? And like, what's going on in this town that like nothing really happens in? Um, it's like a tourist town. And with them having to close down the beach, that also stirs up a lot of things because like you have a lot of different people wanting to open the beaches for different reasons, like for financial reasons. And because it's the summer, this is tourist season, this is the time of the year that we like make all this money, we can't afford to close down the beaches. But then we have other people that are like, there's a shark, <laughs> close the beach. So that was fun. That was interesting. Overall, I don't know if any of that made sense, but I enjoyed it. Three out of five. Jaws was the first one. The next one that we have, let's see, ooh, was The Shining by Stephen King. I totally forgot I read that in October. <laughs> um, I um, I remember really liking this book. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads and um, I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook was very long, I feel like, if I remember correctly. I remember it being really long and I remember the beginning, like third of the book, like we weren't even at the Overlook Hotel. So like, I think, Everyone should know what The Shining's about. Um, basically, Jack Torrance and his family go to the Overlook Hotel um, during the winter months, and he's like the hotel caretaker during that time. And yeah, that's literally that's literally the premise of the book. Oh, and their son Danny has this like unique gift. It's called the Shine, and some creepy things happen. So some crazy stuff goes down, and it's absolutely insane. I haven't seen the movie. I plan on seeing the movie very soon like i'm gonna rent it or something because i thought it was on netflix it's not on netflix i'm gonna check on hbo we'll see but i don't know i really want to see it i've heard so many good things obviously it's like a classic and um yeah for like october like to read that it was really fun i remember that um and yeah i really liked it four four to five stars it was it was pretty solid so definitely i want to pick up a physical copy all these books i really want to get a physical copy um at least from the library um just to see if i'll 
like like it better if it's not audiobooks. Sometimes, you know, audiobooks just work better for certain books, you know, and that's okay. That's fine. But I really, really like The Shining. So that was a def definite positive in my October. The next book that we have, oh my God, I totally forgot about this book. And it was honestly one of the best, like one of the funnest books that I read besides Ready Player One. The second funnest book that I've read this year and it was The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. So the only reason why I really read it was because Noelle had been like raving about it. She just got a tattoo like dedicated to The Hating Game. Like she like loves it. It's a strawberry. It's so stinking cute. And if you read the book, you know what the strawberry means. Um, shortcake, so cute. Um, so basically it's about um, these two people. So it's um, Joshua and Joshua Templeman and Lucy, who is our main character, and they work at a publishing company who they used to work at two separate publishing companies, but recently because of like financial stuff, um, they have merged together. And so now they work together in an office. Um, and yeah, they play this thing called the hating game because they think that they hate each other, but there's a promotion going on um, and they are up against each other for it. And they start to realize that maybe they don't hate each other as much as they thought they did. Or at least Lucy, <laughs> at least Lucy. Um, I don't wanna spoil anything, but it was such a fun book. I gave it five out of five stars. I thought it was so stinking cute. It was funny. And like, I love that the main characters love to read. Like I thought that was really cool as a reader, just being like, oh, this is my dream. Like if I could like do one thing that like, it's not really my passion, but like, I would just like have such a fun time. It would be like being like working at a publishing company. Just like, like I just wanna do that. Cause that would just be the funnest thing ever. Um, but yeah, so. That was great. I loved the book. Five out of five stars. Um, highly recommend. So if you haven't read The Hating Game, it's a romance. It's cute. It gives you all the feels. I'm actually like listening to it again, like re like right now. Like I'm listening to it again because I was like, you know what? I need a book that's like gonna get me out of a funk. That's gonna lift my spirits. And The Hating Game is that. Like I think it takes the spot of Fangirl by Rainbow Row. Like that used to be my go-to book. Like if it was, if I was ever in a slump or. If, if I was ever in like a bad mood or anything, I would read Fangirl. And I think The Hating Game has has taken the top spot for that. So I liked it a lot. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, then I would definitely check it out. It was so good. The next one that we have is, oh, I actually have the physical copy for this one. It is 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. I freaking love this book. I gave it five out of five stars. This is a reread. I read it last year. I think I read it the year before that. I love this book so, so much. I also have Helene Hamp's, um other book. It's called Q's Legacy. It's so cute. So this book, um, it's, it's a 24 year correspondence between Helene Hanf and this British bookstore called Marks and Co. And she corresponds with the, um, he like sends her books and everything. His name is Frank. And like through that, she develops this friendship with him. She lives in New York and they live obviously in England. And it's just so, so, so sweet. She just develops so many friendships with like the people that work at the bookstore, their families, like they send her gifts, she sends them gifts. And it's honestly just like the purest thing ever. It's so wholesome. And it's also like 90 pages and it's so, so, good and it's so funny too like helene ham just has such a like a really good sense of humor and it's just uh she's incredible i loved this book i plan on reading it again very soon because it's just like it's just a light read it just makes you feel good and it's just really wholesome and like that's what we need in 2020 a wholesome read and that's this so 84 charing cross road by helene ham is a must read a must read the next one that we have is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. And it is a YA mystery type of book. And honestly, I only read it because my friend at work was like, here, I have this like copy, you wanna borrow it? And I was like, yeah, why not? Sure, like, I don't really read YA like that, but like, I could use something to read, you know what I mean? And like, I did, I read it in like a day. It was enjoyable. I gave it three out of five stars. Um, it wasn't anything spectacular. I saw the twists coming from a mile away, um, but it was still a fun time. I did like that they did have like some different things that I've never seen a YA kind of delve into. Um, I don't wanna like spoil anything or give anything away because there's like, plot points there but um I thought it was pretty good for a YA novel not saying that like if it's YA that it's like not good but like 
from what I was expecting this book to be, it was actually like, it met my expectations. Like I was like, this is pretty good. Like I'm enjoying this. So um, yeah, three out of five stars. I really enjoyed it and it was fun. Oh, let me tell you about the premise. So real quick, real quick. Um, basically it's about these students. I think there's like five students and they all get to tension and one of them dies. <laughs> and then now everyone's trying to figure out these are the only five people that were in this room. Like what happened, you know what I mean? And so one of them is lying. Um, it was really good. I thought it was fun. And, but like I said, I saw the twist from like a mile away, but it was still nice. It was still fun, whatever. It was a whatever read, you know what I mean? The next book that I read and the last book, so this must've been in November, <laughs> was um, The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Um, this was a reread for me. I try to reread it at least once a year. I think that it's really enjoyable and I really like the audiobook, although I would highly recommend the actual physical copy um, because there's just so much that you need to like pay attention to. And I feel like an audiobook, if you're doing other things, like I normally listen while I'm driving or I'm in the shower or something. So like, I just felt like because I wasn't paying 100% of attention to the book, it kind of took away from the experience. So I would recommend actually reading like a physical copy of this book, but oh my gosh, she does not disappoint. Erin Morgenstern is fantastic. I think this is her, this was her first book. Um, her second book was The Star of the Sea. And um, oh my God, it was just really incredible. Um, basically it's about um, Marco and Celia and they are magicians and they have been put in a competition against each other since they were little. And yeah, the stakes are high only one of them can remain at the end of the competition and their playing ground is the circus. And it's magical, it's fun, it's so atmospheric and whimsical. It's just, it's honestly such a joy to read. Um, I did lower my rating, so when I read it back in the day, I think maybe like 2015, 2016, I gave it five out of five stars. But this time that I did reread it, I did give it four out of five stars. I felt like Marco and Celia, while I loved them, I didn't get as much character development as I was hoping for. And um, I don't know. I just like felt like there was, there was just something missing for their characters. And I just didn't feel like, like it felt like they were side characters for a lot of the book. And especially the, like the beginning half of the book um, just felt kind of slow, but like towards the end it picks up so many things happen. And I do like that we got to delve a lot into the other characters as well in the circus and kind of see their lives and how Marco and Celia's actions affect them. It was really cool. Um, I want to read it again very soon because I want to read like an actual copy. I really want to buy a copy because it's like, it's that I really, really, really love that book. So yeah, that's it for this video. I read six books in October and November. So if that doesn't tell you kind of how my like last two months have been, it's been crazy. Um, but I am thankful that um, the year's almost over and that we get kind of like a reset in this new year. Let's hope for a good 2021 and um, a good rest of the year. So I hope everyone has an amazing holiday season. I know this is a tough time for a lot of families, mine included, but you know, keep your head up high and let's, let's, let's finish out strong. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoy and um, bye. <laughs>